In the following we will view and debug some common analysis error messages. Of course, error messages reported by the FEM solver are always annoying, because it implies that it will take longer to get the job done. However, look at it from the positive side. It is better that the solver is having troubles, instead of your customer. And even, if the solver does not report any errors, it does not necessarily mean, you are out of trouble. Why? Any ideas? Just recall the typical FEM process. Each working step is prone to errors. Please think about likely errors associated with geometry, meshing, materials and properties, loads, and constraints. For instance, looking at geometry. Here, the surface edge connectivity may be wrong. Also, geometry simplifications due to mid-surface creation may not be correct. The element type and its size is always something you should be concerned about. Material and property data are prone to typos. Additionally, it is easy to mix up the unit system. Ask yourself, where are the constraints and loads coming from? I know it sounds trivial, but if you miss a load, don't expect that the solver will take care of it. Depending on the kind of analysis you may need to specify solver-related parameters such as a damping factor, contact stiffnesses, time steps and so on. Remember, the output is always as good as your input. In the following we will view and debug some common analysis error messages. Clearly, you always have to view the messages prompted in the DOS window. Further details about the analysis are contained in the analysis log file, which is saved as the .out file. In most cases it is sufficient to understand a few keywords. Some of the typical keywords are loads, case control, mat and property. Then think about where this entity is defined or used. Check these places and you will find, in most cases, the error. This debugging process is shown with respect to various encountered error messages, respectively. Here you can click on a specific error message listed on this slide to jump directly to the explanation of the error. Alternatively, you can click the next option to view more errors. Let's start with the first error that was listed. This error message is about material and property, and especially about the material data, ENG, provided in the card image map. Starting the analysis yields the following error message. Either E or G must be explicitly provided from MAT1. Apparently, something is wrong with the material definition. Again, think about where the material is defined and referenced. We are now going back to these panels. Here the error message is quite clear, isn't it? In case you need more information about the error, just click on the button, View.out. This will open up the analysis log file in in text editor, as will be shown later. Let us view the contents of the material named steel. Here we are. By mistake the required material data is not defined. We need to at least specify the Young's modulus E, and the Poisson's ratio nu. Update the corresponding fields, and you are hopefully done. You can click the top option to return to the error list or the next option to proceed to the next slide. This option is applicable anytime the top option is available. This error message states the following, missing material referenced by a property. The two keywords, material and property already help to narrow down our search for the causes of this error. We start the analysis by clicking the radius button. This prompts an error message about missing material referenced by a property. In this case we should have a look at whether the material exists and whether it is referenced inside the property collector. Once more, we begin our search by looking at the card image of the material named, steel. Nothing happens. In other words, we couldn't view the card image of the material named steel. This should ring the alarm bells. If you can't review a card image, then typically, the card image was not specified. 
As the material collector exists, we activate the edit button. This brings up a new pop-up window. Notice the information provided next to card image. It simply says, none. This is the cause of the error message. We have defined a material collector, but somehow we did not specify what kind of material it is. Let us select MAT1, the material card image for temperature independent, linear elastic, isotropic material. Just to double check, we are reviewing the previously defined card image again. Oops, we almost forgot to define the material data. But this should not be a problem for you. This time, we are starting the analysis ourselves. Watch the screen. Did you notice anything? In the message bar the following error is prompted. Error, no load steps defined. So, how do we proceed? I am confident that you know how to solve it. In fact, the next couple of steps shouldn't be new to you. We will simply create the missing load step. The load step will be named load step underscore. Once the load step name is defined, we need to reference the constraints and the forces. Selecting the option, name and ID, may be helpful. Note, that now the name of the collector and its ID is displayed. That is all it takes to define the missing load step. Next would be to restart the analysis again. Here, the solver complains that something in the case control is missing. The before mentioned error message is explained in some detail. ID2 used on case control data SPC or SPC add is missing in bulk data. This sounds complicated, but it isn't. Just follow my advice and look for some keywords in this error message. As you may remember, case control corresponds to load step, SPC to constraints. Understanding these keywords is crucial for the following debugging process. This time we are going to view the analysis log file as well. Do you understand the meaning of SPC is not referenced by case control? Remember, case control refers to load step. As the solver complains about the load step, let's take a look at it. Maybe something is wrong there. Please note that the load step information displayed while entering this panel does not necessarily reflect the contents of the load step you are interested in. Hence, for safety's sake, activate the review button first. Compare the ID of the constraints in the model browser with the ID referenced for SPC. Any concerns? Well, accidentally, the forces are referenced as constraints, and the constraints are referenced as loads. Obviously, things are mixed up here. Therefore, we need to update this load step definition. Selecting the option, name and ID, may be helpful. Make sure to assign the new setting to the load step. This is accomplished by clicking the update button. Now we would be ready to restart the analysis.